Hi guys, this video is only going to cover partial eta squared. Uh, the other partial designs for omega and GES, I'll be in a separate video. So under variance overlap here, I clicked on eta partial. And this one's actually going to be pretty easy. And I have a bunch of different examples. So you could have two-way between subjects ANOVA, two-way repeated measures ANOVA, or a mixed design. And all of these will run roughly the same. So we'll look at kind of one of each. And the formula for this is sum of squares model over sum of squares model plus sum of squares error. So it sort of deals with that repeated measures issue we talked about in the full eta squared video. And to enter everything, I also need degrees of freedom model and error and F because that is how the confidence interval is calculated. So let's come over here and look at some examples. So first up, we have two way between subjects and JASP. Now you would want to calculate one for each one of these, which you'll see um, is how, what, how, there are three of them out here for, the, um, <clears throat> for each IV and their interaction. And so um, we've got some really big numbers, so it gave us uh, scientific notation here in JASP, but we could also use maybe SAS. And SAS gave us slightly different numbers, which I find really interesting. But what happens here is that we get the sum of squares um, model for each one, right? And then we have to figure out sum of squares error. But in, um, in SAS here, that's going to be here, right? So we would treat each one of these as a separate one. So we'd enter sum of squares model for the first one and sum of squares error. And between subjects design, the error will be the same for each one. Okay. Or I could also look at SPSS here. And so if I scroll into this section with the important stuff, I'd ignore the Krepton model and the intercept and I go down to here. So I'd have the sum of squares model and sum of squares error. Okay, so let's try one of these. So for year here in this example of year by type, I would enter um, one as my degrees of freedom model and 18,250 for my degrees of freedom error. So this is a very big sample size. So one, 18,250. My sum of squares model is also a very large number. So I look here, right? So one, six, seven, five, six, eight, two. I think I got that right. Right on the limits of chunking, correct? All right. So let's look over here. One, six, seven, five, six, eight, two. Okay. And then I also need to enter the error, which is here. So six, two, zero, four, four, two, two, seven, zero. So six, two, zero, four, four, two, to seven zero. Last but not least, all those crazy numbers. And then over here for year, I would enter F. So we've got one, this is essentially these two spots, these two spots, and then F. So 49 to 89. Let's see. We're gonna make alpha 0.01 just to switch it up here and I'm gonna hit calculate. Tells me my eta squared is zero. And so the eta squared for this one's gonna be very small and my confidence interval is accordingly very small and it does not technically include zero. So you might conclude this effect size is different from zero. So out here somewhere in the margins, this effect size is very, very small, but um, does not include zero in the confidence interval. I think you'd have a hard time selling someone though that this was worth studying. So you still have to think about practical important for effect sizes as well. And so let's go back, look over here, and it actually told me that partial eta squared was 0 0.003. So it's uh, one issue with our system is that we're currently rounding to two decimals because that is APA style. And so eta squared, you would say, is less than 0, 01, and the confidence interval is correspondingly very small. But given the large sample size, it's saying that it does not cross zero. Now, if we wanted to play with a larger effect size here, we could change up our sum of squares model. So 789268850, we'll just round up. So we got 7892680. Our sum of squares error is gonna stay the same as before. So, but now we have four degrees of freedom and our F is 2580. 
So one becomes four, error stays the same, F is 580 or something close to that. So now our effect size is 0.11, the confidence interval is 10 to 12, and we would say that this does not cross zero. Okay. Easy enough to calculate. And this is what SPSS's output looks like. Okay. Now if I wanted to calculate, I was gonna scroll out just a little bit more, maybe from a repeated measures design, what I would need to do differently is treat each little repeated measures block as its own. So let me zoom in here. And what we do is maybe for forward strength here, we do one degree of freedom and five, 156. Sorry, do this. One and 156. Let's go here. So we do one and 156. Our sum of squares model, we would get from here. Uh, sorry, here um, for forward strength only. So we'd say. Uh, 50861 if I round up. Okay. Sum of squares error uh, is going to be here under residual, so 8301. Okay. Our F statistic will be this first line, so 955740. calculate and so we get an eta squared of 0.86. Okay. Now the tricky part here is in a double repeated measures design or this one is actually a mixed design. Um, what we've got is we've kind of got each um, different piece. So this is actually a three-way mixed design and so we've got forward strength as one of our IVs right but then we also have the interaction between forward strength and group so we'd have to treat these separately. Um, but we'd pull our sum of squares for the, uh, for the model, sum of squares error would be the error for both of these, our degrees of freedom model, degrees of freedom error, and then F. Okay. Now if we looked at, one more, a um, example from SAS, which is actually a different example, although they're all supposed to be the same, but you know, we ran a different one for fun. What we want to look at is not the model up here. Remember, this runs a little differently. We want to come down here and look at uh, each IV one at a time. Now, the tricky part here is that you want to make sure you know which one is which. Since this is a mixed design, what we're seeing is that um, we'd have to know which one is between and which one is within. For uh, Ada, this isn't such a big deal, uh, but for some of our other designs, this would be a big deal. So we could do one degree of freedom and 312. We'd want to use our sum of squares model, so 682 here, and then our um, sum of squares error, which is over here. Right? And that's how you do that one for SAS. For a mixed design in SPSS, what you would do is use the sum of squares model up here. You use 1 and 155 down here. And then our sum of squares error for either one of these is this 8, 6, 2, 1. Now, if I wanted to do um, the group one all by itself in, in SPSS, it's going to be down here. So this would be my sum of squares model, my sum, uh, degrees of freedom model, oops, degrees of freedom model and error, my sum of squares error. So it would all be down here within um, this little between subjects chunk because SPSS separates these out. So you kind of match the error term to wherever it's placed. So for example, let me back up again. The residual term here is uh, right underneath these two. So it's part of, it's the error for that one. And then this is the error for these two. And then this one here is the error for these two. The error for just group by itself is here. So you just have to make sure you match the error term um, kind of wherever it's placed. Now in SAS, 
the unfortunate part is, is the error is uh, just all put up here, right? And then uh, each individual mile sum of squares is down here. And then in SPSS, the error for backward strength and group is here, but the error for group all by itself is down here. Now, if we look at a doubly repeated design, in JASP it looks kind of the same, right? So I have um, the error term is right underneath each one. In SAS, what happens is we get this uh, nice little kind of split. And so what we want to do, I'm not sure why it ran <laughs> three or four times, but where error is going to be up here. And then we're really interested in group down here and not subject. In uh, SPSS, it's going to be the error term right underneath each one. So error here for forward strength here. Okay. All right. So that is how you calculate uh, partial eta squared because it's the same no matter which type of two-way design that you are doing.